going on, everybody? No beard, go ahead and here. Welcome back to the channel. It's Vibes of News, babe. Hashtag Vibes of News. Today, we got 76 mods on the testing list. Giant Software released a new podcast. And we got 11 modders to talk about, including a new beet and potato harvester heading our way. Check it out. Starting off today with the mods and testing. In total, we've got 76 mods on the list today. 46 are in stage one and 30 are in stage two. Some notable mods of PC testing include Bell Transporter, Joy's 4 Agristar 6.61, ITR2, Multifruit Buying Station, Pallet Auto Load Specialization, The Beast 1000, and Transfer Ownership. Maps and PC testing today include New Park Farm and Toscano. Some notable mods and console testing include the Case IH Maxim Multi Controller, Lizard Colossus Harvester Pack, Mower and Wrapper with Hitch, Pole Trailer, and the Ponzi Scorpion King. And your maps and console testing today include Iowa Plains View, Newfinner Valley, New Bartle Shagan, and New Lands. With all that being said, we still have 125 mods city waiting to be tested. It the current average waiting time for newly submitted mods is three work days. Yesterday, between when I recorded and edited the new mod video, the Gelect 600 kg weight was removed from the mod hub, but it was re-added later yesterday afternoon. So if you guys missed out on the mod, it is back and is for all platforms on the mod hub. Additionally, there is a known issue with the update to 82 Studios Multifruit Buying Station where it does not recognize bulk of materials. David has sent in an emergency update, which is in testing right now. It should be published ASAP, so keep a lookout for that. The next episode of the Giants podcast is out, and in today's podcast, community coordinator Shaki talks with Chris, the lead audio designer for Farming Simulator. They talked about the challenges of recording sound for tractors and harvesters, and what goes into getting those recordings into the game so that players can enjoy them. Shaki also channeled his inner Leakerton and mentioned that there are a few things to announce for Farming Simulator in the near future and that there's a lot of interesting things going on at the Giants office right now. Oh, and that they are far from done with FS22. Speaking of 82 Studio from earlier, his TLX Phoenix Winter Wolf is off for testing. And today we get a little teaser showing the salt spreader on the back. I can't say if we're going to be getting this attachment in the first version of the mod or not, but I do know that we will be seeing the mod firsthand very soon. If you're unfamiliar with the premise of the Phoenix Winter Wolf, it's basically an off-road, go-anywhere, I-do-what-I-want version of the original Phoenix truck. However, it does have some new customization options and attachments that make it a completely new truck. It was actually one of the last mods to be released in FarmSim 19, so if you're still playing that, you can go download this right now and check it out. Chris S's Colossus Pack is getting an update and testing right now. However, the update is not for the Combine Harvester. It is to add this. This is a modified beet and potato harvester that will hold up to 250,000 liters in the unrealistic capacity. And headers have been modified as well to go 10 miles an hour instead of 6. We're going to talk about beets later in the video as well, but just keep this mod in the back of your mind while we are. It's going to make things a whole lot easier. Gamer Designs has a few more screenshots of their southern pole trailer that they showed off yesterday for the first time, but I think this isn't testing right now. There's a pole trailer in testing. Here we get to see all the different colors. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of them. He received special permissions from 82 Studio to use his color palette. So you guys know what that means. Nitro blue, baby. This trailer will allow you to easily get in and out of the woods with a full load. The shortest it goes is around 30 feet and its max can hold basically a full tree in the game. Actually, he says any full tree in the game. It will have straps as well. That way, nothing can roll away. Lancy Boy teases us big time today as he shows off this building which is from Stone Valley in 19, a building that most people used as a hub for their trucking business. Well, Lazy Boy asks, who would like to see this shop revamped into the American Falls map? Well, I can think of about 4 million people that would like that. Yes, please. Thank you very much. He also asks if we would like to see all of the production buildings from American Falls as placeables as well, just like he's doing with the farm buildings. Oh well, yeah, of course. Bring it on. Pascal Couts is back with what appears to be an update to their medium warehouse that he says has been sent off for testing. This version will work with the Platinum DLC pallets, which is pretty epic and should make things a lot easier for you guys. However, keep in mind that the larger pallets like the paper roll and the prefab walls, these are not supported just because they're too big for the pallet rack. They don't work physically. 
Those will still need to be transported manually, but it looks like everything else will work just fine. FSG Modding are also getting into the placeable news today with a new older building of some sorts. Kind of looks like an animal pen as well. Maybe some cows in the background. And they've also got this more classic red barn with a farm sign, which just says the farm. <laughs> Great. Good job. Great snow mask on the roof there as well. Check that out. Yo, very well done. We've also got a few more trailers to look at today. The first of which is from IJ Creative Design. It's an update to their existing AW Mono 14T, specifically the PC version. This update will add silage sides as an option, but that's not all. A lizard version will also be uploaded soon, which will be crossplay compatible. So if you've been eyeing this trailer on console but couldn't get it, that time should be coming to an end soon. Another trailer being worked on is Vertex Design's Vigard BWZ 760 Bell trailer. This is very similar to the Flegel trailers that we've been used to in the past few years, so the operation from the sides should be very familiar to you guys. This does appear to be a new brand in the game, and Vertex do say that a console release has not been set yet, which kind of makes me wonder that they're actually trying to do it. That's great. Hopefully. So we'll just have to see. A uh, new brand should be coming to the game for all platforms, though. We will need to wait for the final announcement for that. Taylor Farms poses a question to players. What are your thoughts on the price of rewards for beats on his maps like Frankenmuth and Michigan Farms? Are they too high? Are they too low? Well, there's a reason for this, because he has made a change with Michigan Farms when using the beat piler. If you guys own it, you get about 45% of what you haul back in money. If you don't own it, you get about 50% less than that. He wants to make sure that players are getting rewarded for all of the hard work that you put in as beats are not easy and we all know this, but hey, remember that Colossus? <laughs> it should make things easier. Oxygen David is back with us and he's got a few more screenshots from around his next map, Court Farms. It's been a while since we've seen anything on this. He does say that the main farm is now being worked on and will feature all the new animals that we've been talking about over the past few months. There's also going to be a lot of storage space, but it is tight as you would expect the UK map to be. There's some great views around with rolling hills, and there's new lighting specifically made for this map. And lastly today, one of the biggest names in Farming Simulator has broken their modding silence for the first time since September of last year, Dusty Dave Modding. He shows off a map that he's bringing over to Farming Simulator 22, Rudelmore. However, this may look like another map that you guys know, Pemberland Farm. The map is getting completely rebuilt and will be getting many new additions to bring the map up to his standards and skills of today. This map was one of the very first projects that he ever did, so to say that nostalgia is going to be real with this is a big understatement. With a rebuild and a new name, the map will be coming to life once again. He's aiming to get it out for all platforms on the mod hub, but his time is limited. Remember that most modders, in fact, I don't think any modder does this full time. So 100% of the work that you guys see that's on Mod Hub is done in their spare time. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Big shout out and thank you to all of the modders out there who work hard to bring us new and updated mods and maps. You guys make this game so much fun to play and we the community are grateful for what you do. Thank you. And thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. Did you know that just like every episode of Farm Sim News, everything that we talked about today can be found in the description below. And you can check out this entire video in the form of a news article on farmsimnews.com. There's no release dates for mods, so no one knows when any mod is going to be released. And if I didn't talk about something that you want to know about, that just simply means that there's no new information on that topic at the time of recording this video. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel for updated information on everything that you need to know about going on in the world of farming simulator well guys that's it for today i hope you've enjoyed the video if you did drop a like on it get subscribed if you're new and join the goham fam make sure your notification bells are on as well that way you never miss daily farming simulator videos here on the channel with that hope you have a great day we will see you later Peace. Yo, for real though, 250,000 liters? That's more than I mod my stuff to hold, come on.